men faced and the legacy they have left for all of us. Tonight, we're honored to be joined by our local military musicians from the Air Force, Army, and Navy. Together, these three bands perform over a thousand events each year, providing morale for our nation's military and reaching millions of American citizens. We're happy they're here tonight to help us celebrate the Constitution. We're also very excited to showcase some of our own Colonial Williamsburg interpreters and the Colonial Williamsburg fifes and drums. Thank you for taking the time to be here this evening. It's going to be a great evening. Thank you for coming to Colonial Williamsburg and enjoy the show. Thank you, Tim. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we present an exciting program that celebrates the great freedoms guaranteed by our Constitution, featuring the United States Air Force Heritage of America Band, the United States Army Training and Doctrine Command Band, under the direction of Major Randy Bartell and Lieutenant Richard Viglucci, the United States Fleet Forces Band, under the direction of Ensign Clint McClanahan, the Fife's and Drums of Colonial Williamsburg, under the direction of Mr. Stuart Pittman, Mr. Ron Carnegie as George Washington. Mr. Brian Austin as James Madison. Featured vocal musician, first uh, third class, Julius Coker. Youth narrators and the joint bass, Langley Eustace Honor Guard. As Benjamin Franklin wisely said, the Constitution only gives people the right to pursue happiness. You have to catch it yourself. We hope you'll catch some happiness this evening as we present to support and defend.
102 years ago today, on September 17, 1814, Francis Scott Key's poem, The Defense of Fort McHenry, was first printed on broadsides in Baltimore, Maryland. Detailing the emotions Key felt as he witnessed the enormous stars and stripes flying above the fort, Key's poem quickly became a popular song as the citizens of America embraced this important military victory. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, would you please rise as the honor guards from Joint Base Langley-Eustis present the colors, thoughtfully render the appropriate honors to our flag, and join in singing our national anthem. Please be seated. And now it's our privilege to introduce our military host for this evening's performance, the Commanding General, United States Army Center for Initial Military Training, Major General Anthony Funkhauser. All right. Good evening, everybody. You guys ready for an exciting and patriotic evening? Yo. Yeah. That's what we're here for. So I'm uh, General Tony Funkhauser, and I have the honor of serving as a senior commander for the armed forces on Joint Base Langley and Eustis. And one of the privileges of my job is that I sometimes get asked to attend and speak at amazing events like this. And I'm definitely honored to be here this evening. So thank you for allowing me to say just a few words before we get started. I know you're all waiting for some amazing entertainment, so I'll try not to disappoint you and speak too long. But this is definitely something to recognize here this evening. One of the great resources we have in our military is right here in the Hampton Roads region, world-class military bands. As we said, those three bands that we have here are some of the most talented we have in the Army, very elite folks selected for this. So I'd ask you guys to give them a big round of applause up front, Tom. Thanks. In addition to performing for wonderful people like you, the outstanding soldiers, sailors, and airmen that you'll hear tonight stand ready for whatever mission they are assigned. 
Whether here or around the globe, you can be sure they represent America's finest. And like each of the warriors that serve within all of our service branches, they stand ready at any time to support and defend our Constitution. This event underscores our appreciation for the relationship we have with the Hampton Roads community. Ultimately, the armed forces serve the people of the United States, and you have been the bedrock of support to our men and women in uniform in our local area. It is special events like this that allows us to highlight how much we cherish your friendship and support. You are wonderful hosts and neighbors. We thank you for making us feel so welcome throughout the year. As many of you know, if they're veterans, the military lifestyle includes a lot of moving. You give up new routes to place our homes and provide us with a sense of community wherever we go, despite all those moves. You stand by us and our loved ones when we deploy to places far away from home. So thank you for this support. It truly means so much to all the military. Tonight we pause to celebrate the 229th anniversary of the Constitution. Like you, our founding fathers worked hard to make this a great country. In the preamble of the Constitution, the founding fathers expressed their desire to form a more perfect union, establish justice, and secure the blessings of liberty. And due to their efforts, they created a system that allows its people to aspire to great heights. Today, we commemorate the accomplishments of those founding fathers for providing the framework as much as we commemorate the collective efforts of the people of the United States for carrying out their plan. And so to help celebrate Constitution Day, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you and present to you a program called To Support and Defend. Have a great evening.
support and defend words spoken by countless Americans as they stand and affirm an oath to our nation's guiding principles. An oath not reserved for the privileged or the fortunate, not reserved for our military and civilian leaders, not reserved for state, county, and city leaders, but an oath written for every generation of Americans, past, present, and those generations to come. In the words of Constitutional Delegate Alexander Hamilton, here, sir, the people will govern. Hail Columbia was composed in 1789 by Philip Plow, one of the America's earliest composers, for the inauguration of George Washington. The song was originally titled President's March. When lyrics were added in 1789, the song became the unofficial anthem of the United States until the Star Spangled Banner was officially designated in Congress in 1931. Ladies and gentlemen, the Colonel Waynesburg Fife and Drums. from the very core of that freedom, won at so costly a price, our founding representatives would come to Philadelphia in May 1787 to create a strong elected government, responsive to the will of the people. Through the following several months, these delegates combated mistrust, factionalism, in rivalries, but bearing these challenges, they pressed forward with firm resolve. Finally, on September 17, 1787, the Constitution of the United States was signed by 40 courageous Americans. The words reflect not only the vision of these men in Philadelphia, but the values we prize as free Americans these 228 years later. 
the first president of the United States, George Washington. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, to establish justice, to provide for our common defense, to promote the general welfare, and to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. The Colonial Waynesburg Fife and Drums will now play a section, selection of the military marches, including Constitution March, Washington's open beating, and the Constitution hornpipe. In addition to providing battlefield communication via a short system of repetitive tunes, pipers and drummers were often called upon to provide dance music for soldiers while encamped. The fifes and drums will now present an Irish slip gig entitled Drops of Brandy.
1770, William Billings of Boston, Massachusetts, wrote the battle hymn, Chester, which gained popularity throughout the American colonies during the War for American Independence. The fifes and drums will exit the stage playing Chester, followed by Yankee Doodle. From the very beginning of our nation's early history, many volunteer militia were called upon to defend our new-founded country. This same volunteerism remains a vital part of our nation's military, with thousands of dedicated citizens answering the call for service in the Guard and Reserve. And their service before self is immeasurable. In tribute to our earliest defenders of freedom and those citizens who have been called upon for over two centuries, we present Mark Waters' Forged in fire.
institution, One Virginian stands as the principal author and advocate for ratification and the first ten amendments known as the Bill of Rights. During his extraordinary lifetime, he ended up on the winning side of nearly every important issue that our young nation faced. The fourth president of the United States, James Madison. peace and friendly intercourse with all nations having correspondent dispositions, to maintain sincere neutrality towards belligerent nations, to prefer in all cases amicable discussion and reasonable accommodation of differences to a decision of them by an appeal to arms, to exclude foreign intrigues and foreign partialities so degrading to all countries and so baneful to free ones foster a spirit of independence, too just to invade the rights of others, too proud to surrender our own, too liberal to indulge unworthy prejudices ourselves, and too elevated not to look down upon them in others, to hold the union of the states as the basis of their peace and happiness, to support the Constitution, which is the cement of the union, as well in its limitations as in its authorities respect the rights and authorities reserved to the states and to the people as equally incorporated with and essential to the success of the general system, to avoid the slightest interference with the right of conscience or the function of religion so wisely exempted from civil jurisdiction, to preserve in their full energy the other salutary provisions in behalf of private and personal rights and of the freedom of the press to observe economy and honorable discharge of the public debts, to keep within the requisite limits of standing military force, always remembering that an armed and trained militia is the firmest bulwark of republics, and that without standing armies their liberty can never be endangered, nor with large ones safe. To promote by authorized means improvements friendly to agriculture, to manufacturers, and to external as well as internal commerce to favor in like manner the advancement of science, and the diffusion of information as the best alignment to true liberty, to carry on the improvements of which the human mind and manners are susceptible in a civilized state. As far as sentiments and intentions such as these can aid the fulfillment of my duty, they will be a resource which cannot fail.
From our early beginnings, our nation grew, a diversity expanding, a melting pot of other continents and nations. From every corner, immigrants pour in, bringing their unique strengths and talents, living the American dream. New patriots embrace our core beliefs, pledging allegiance to these timeless human rights, an oath to our Constitution and its meaning, and honoring it daily. These millions of every race and culture, of every religion and situation, make us America. Not only America, but a beautiful kaleidoscope of humanity, ever braver and ever stronger.
as we take the time to commemorate our United States Constitution, drafted and signed by our founding fathers, we'd also like to take a moment to honor the perseverance and dedication of this great nation. Here is a song to express that notion. This is O America. Thank <laughs> you. 
229 years, our Constitution has stood through many tests, challenges from within our own people and from those in the world who would disallow the rights and freedoms it so wonderfully protects. Our obligation then is clear, to expose and educate our youngest citizens so that they may embrace their own debates and compromises and work to support and defend their Constitution. Such is the nature of our democracy. is what the people are entitled to against every government, and what no just government should refuse or rest on inference. Thomas Jefferson. they shall grow weary of the existing government, they can exercise their constitutional right of amending it, or exercise their revolutionary right to overthrow it. Abraham Lincoln.
For 185 years, Americans have known the song, and more importantly, the lyrics to My Country, Tis of Thee, written by Samuel Smith. Indeed, the first performance of this inspiring song took place on July the 4th, 1831, at Park Street Church in Boston. The modern-day composer Ryan Nolan has taken this familiar melody and transformed it into this powerful arrangement. Here is Let Freedom Ring.
For over 229 years, American patriots have sworn an oath to support and defend our great nation, bravely accepting the challenges thrust upon them. In the same way, we remember the sacrifice of our fallen heroes tonight with honor and ceremony, celebrating them for what they have done and, more importantly, for who they were. During this next feast, the Joint Base Langley Eustis Honor Guard will demonstrate a tradition that has honored our fallen service members since the mid-19th century. It's a cherished way we military members remember our brothers and sisters in arms who gave their all. No soldiers choose to die. It's what they risk by being who and where they are. It's what they dare while saving someone else whose life means suddenly as much to them as theirs, or more. To honor them, why speak of duty or the will of governments? Think first of love each time you tell their story. It gives their sacrifice a name and takes from war its glory.
Thank you very much. You all are enjoying the concert so far. I'd like to take just a quick minute and uh, six people, wonderful. <laughs> You're enjoying it. I'd like to take just a, a quick. For those of you that may not have seen a Navy band in a while, just be cautious when a sailor steps up to the mic. Uh, we would like to take just a minute and acknowledge a, a few folks once again to our, our sponsor, Major General uh, Funkhauser and his wife. Th th thank you very much for being here and hosting the evening. <laughs> a special thank you to the folks at Merchant Square, especially Carol Gillum. Carol around. Thank you very much, Carol. Everyone at Colon Colonial Williamsburg, especially Jay White and Tim Sutphin, and Stuart Pittman and the Fife and Drums of Colonial Williamsburg. <laughs> uh, and last but certainly not least, the band would like to extend a, a special thank you to everyone at Aromas for the delicious uh, meal we had before the concert tonight. <laughs> Generally, the thank yous come towards the end. We have a few more uh, selections in store for, for you. You may recognize the melody of this one. This is uh, Philip Rothman's arrangement of America the Beautiful.
Search, my friend, and you will not find another place quite like this one. The history of our nation and of its armed forces comes together here on this single piece of land, this historic triangle, and the spirit of those who served and who continue to serve, that spirit can be found here and around the world. It is a spirit made manifest on the printed pages of a musical arrangement. So now we ask our veterans to stand proudly to their service song with music that sets the pulse racing and the feet tapping. It is their proud melody. It is our music. It is the music of America's armed forces. Marine. 